Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss ERISA plan financial statement audit. Now in the prior session we looked at ERISA from a historical overview and it's very important to go back and learn what is ERISA, the Employee Retirement Income Security Act of 1974. And what I did is I gave you a historical overview to put ERISA into a context. This way when we are discussing why ERISA is treated a little bit differently from an audit perspective. So why conduct, why when we conduct an audit of their financial statement plan, it's important for the management to have some extra responsibilities, you will understand the reason why. So when conducting an, an ERISA audit, in addition to the standard precondition, the auditor must ensure that management understand its extra responsibilities. Now, why do they have this extra responsibilities? Go back and view the prior session. But in this session, we will discuss those extra responsibilities, which are maintaining a current plan instrument, properly administering the plan, ensuring transactions are presented in accordance with the plan's provision, making the necessary determination when an ERISA section 10313C audit is elected, and at the end we will discuss Form 5500 or 5500, which also part of this reporting requirement. As you know anything about Farhat, anything I have a list of items, I'm going to go ahead and cover each item separately, explaining what does it mean, what's the purpose of it. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Starting with maintaining a current plan instrument, what does that mean? This refers to the legal document that defines the rules, terms, and condition of the employee benefit plan. For example, for a 401k plan, these documents outline the benefit provided. So what benefit are we provided in this plan? Who's eligible to participate and how the plan is administered? Now, why is this important? This way, management knows, management knows who is eligible who's participating as employees, you know, you need to know this and how the plan is administered. So man management must ensure that it's always up to date. So if they make any changes to this plan, they have to, they have to show it. Also, any changes that happens from a legal, legal perspective or regulation perspective and failure to maintain current plan instrument could result in non-compliance, which we'll see later. You could be subject to a penalty leading to potential penalties or legal issues. So the first thing, management is responsible for what? Making sure the legal documents that define the plans, the terms and the conditions of that employee benefit plan are up to date. Two, well, the plans are up to date. Are they properly administering the plan? Proper administration involves managing the plan in according with both governing documents, which we saw on the prior on the prior slide, and applicable laws, for example, ERISA, IRS rules, so on and so forth. This include handling contribution, benefit distribution, participating communi participant communication, and other operational aspect. So, how does a retirement plan works? Well, you have employees, and many of these employees thousands of them maybe for large companies, those employees contribute money to a retirement plan or to a pension plan or the company itself, the company itself contribute money to this plan. So how is this contribution handled? Then at some point, these employees, they switch to the other side and the pension plan will start to pay them out. They'll start to pay them out when they retire. How is the benefit distribution is being handled? If there's any changes in this plan, how are we communicating the changes to the participant? And other operational aspect, are they properly administ administering this? So management must make sure that the plan is operated consistently with its terms. Whatever they are promising, it's working properly. For example, 
participant benefits must be calculated correctly, of course. Now, again, why? Because these plans were subject to abuse before 1974, and that's why we have it at 1974. Contribution must be made timely. For example, when the employee contribute money, let's assume the employees are contributing money to the plan, well, those contribution made to the plan on a timely basis, and the plan assets must be handled prudently. It means they have to do take due diligence and not spend it and not use it for any other use. Remember, I talked about you know the mafia using this money to finance its activity. So inadequate administration could lead to financial inaccuracies or non-compliance triggering audits or penalties. So management is responsible for properly administering the plan. And we have to make sure that's the case. Transactions. Ensuring transactions are presented in accordance with the plan provision. Every transaction with the plan, whether it's a contribution, a distribution, an investment, must align with the plan provisions, the rules set forth in the plan instrument. So we're looking at the transaction. Each transaction must comply with the rules. Now here management is responsible that the financial transactions, all of them are properly documented and executed in accordance with the company's plan. And this helps ensure that the financial record reflect the true financial position and the plan and the plan is not subject to abuse or fraud or anything like that. It's for the benefit of the participant. Remember, those pension plans are are for the benefit of the future retirees. So you want to make sure every transaction is accounted for properly, whether it's a contribution by the employees or the employers, investment purchase, when we make investments, because when we invest this money, we invest this money in stocks, bonds, is it being made with due diligence? Making the necessary determination when ERISA section 103 A3C audit is elected. This allows the plan to exclude certain investment information from the audit if it has been certified by a qualified institution. Here, basically, they're giving you a break, making sure if, if your investment, if you invested in a, quali in a qualified institution, what does that mean? It means you can get their audit report and that will be C sufficient. So the qualified institution typically provide an audit report or certification stating that the investment information is proper. If that's the case, that's that's great. If that's the case, it's basically a third party is certifying our investment. Management must determine whether the entity is responsible for preparing and certifying the investment is qualified to ensure that the exemption is applied accurately. Just to want to make sure part of the responsibilities is yes, yes, uh, these investments can be excluded. So the auditor relies on the management certification to exclude certain aspects of the plan's financial statement from the audit. If, if we can get a financial report from a qualified institution, that's it, and we certify it's a qualified institution, the auditor don't have to audit this plan. So management will have to make this necessary determination. Now let's talk about Form 5500. It's a key compliance document required by ERISA as well as IRS and the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation, but we're talking about ERISA here. It's used to report the financial conditions like investments, operation of the employee benefit plan, and health and the welfare plan. It's just basically giving you an overview. The purpose of it is to ensure that employee benefit plan operate in accordance to government regulation and provide transparency about the plan's financial status to participant, beneficiaries, and government agencies. Simply put, additional disclosure, Form 55, 5500. Who must file this form? Administrators of pension and welfare benefit plan like 401k health insurance, if they have 100 or more participant. Smaller plans with fewer than 100, they may file 55 SF, a simplified version of it. This form can be filed electronically through the Department of Labor. Now what's included in this 5500? I don't think they will ask you on the CPA exam, Just it's just basically additional disclosure, just be familiar with it. Basic identifying information about the plan, like the plan sponsor, the type of the plan for a 1K, health, so on and so forth. Financial information, including their assets, liabilities, income and expenses. Plan operations, such as contribution, benefit space, and any changes in the plan financial status. Basically everything that we looked at that the, that the management is responsible for. Schedule attachments, such as Schedule H for large plans, detailing financial information, and Schedule A for insurance information. I don't think you need to know this, just FYI. Now, if you don't file this, 
5500 or if it's incomplete or incorrect it could lead to penalties from the IRS and Department of Labor and this is basically what you need to know about ERISA in terms of studying for the CPA exam what should you do what should you what should you do now you want to go to Farhat lectures look at additional resources multiple choice additional lectures uh, true false questions AI CPA questions that's going to help you prepare for your exam invest in yourself the CPA exam is worth it and good luck Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today.